Bill. Morning, Greg. How you doing? All right. How you doing? Good. Um, you've been coaching in this league for 48 and a half years, I think. Uh, is this the most frustrating season that you've had? Uh, it's probably up there, yeah. Uh, but we just got to keep grinding away here and, you know, turn things around this week. Is it uh, coaching staff, you, players, is it tough to when you're sitting at 2-7 and seven, to get guys to keep grinding away? No, not this week. I mean, I think we um, you know, worked hard this week. Um, again, had our chances. We just weren't able to you know, make enough plays to win. Bill, you talk about working hard this week in practice. One of the areas where, <clears throat> excuse me, where you really struggle is third down, both sides of the football. What do you think's leading to that? Because if you're having great weeks of ex execution in practice, is it just not execution in the games? Or is it just maybe schematically? No, I mean, you saw the game. You know, we, we missed some opportunities that weren't that hard. Should have been able to get them. And so just got to keep working out. Bill, when it comes to the offense and you look at the first half of the season, it, there's been some changes week to week, whether it's injuries or you putting the best guys out there. Do you think that that's led to maybe some chemistry issues between Mac and, and the guys that he's working with out there week to week? Yeah, well, it's always good to put the, you know, that has as much continuity as possible, but sometimes that's out of your control. And so um, it is what it is. Going to the Mac Wilson offsides call, uh, you were pretty heated. What were you arguing with the officials on on that call? Uh, well, there's a couple of things there. But first of all, I'm not sure it was in the neutral zone. You know, and we talked about the ball. You know, the placement of the ball before the game. Um, but looking at it last night, I'm not sure it was in the neutral zone. I mean, he flinched, but I don't think he was in the neutral zone. So when you when you have that situation, and I and I saw you guys obviously on the sideline, what's their explanation? Like I, I you know we couldn't really tell from the angle that we were getting it on on the TV broadcast. Like we couldn't really see if he was in the neutral zone. But what's the explanation that they're giving when you can clearly say, especially the line judges looking right down the line and going, he's not in the neutral zone. What's the referee's explanation? The officials. Yeah. Well, you have to talk to the officials about what they saw or didn't see or whatever. And I don't know. It has felt like there's been inconsistencies week after week, though, when it comes to officiating, not just with the Patriots, but league-wise. Do you feel like there needs to be a change when it comes to making sure that things are by the book every week and everybody's on the same page? Yeah, well, I mean, you always want everything to be done as right as possible. So whether that's us... Uh, Game operation, officiating everything. You know, I think everybody's trying to do the best job they can. But yeah, you know, say the big thing we have to do is worry about what we can control and do a better job of that. Um, but certainly, there's other factors and they're out of our control. Bill, on what you can control, uh, it does seem the team is lacking of discipline. Whether it's tackling or penalties, do you think it's a disciplined team? I think some of our fundamentals are, yeah, they're definitely inconsistent, and we need to be a better, more consistent fundamental team. There's no doubt about that. We work on that every week and talk about it. There's some things that are improving, some things continue to show up. Yeah. Not every team in the league has missed tackles in every game, so, but, you know, we had a couple bad ones in the, on the scramble, long scramble play, obviously. Hurt us. Um, the interception to end the game, is that a ball that Mac should have thrown? Uh, oh, yeah. That's the, that's the it's close play. Um, had a hands on the ball. Uh. Bill, when you talk about the missed tackles, I know it's got to be – or is it difficult because of the new kind of format in the sense of – you know, trying to player safety and not being able to tackle as much in practice, whether that's throughout training camp during the week, has that affected? Like you said, it's just everybody throughout the league. They're just some of the tackling because of the new kind of practice schedule. I think blocking and tackling fundamentals are they are what they are. You work on them every week, um, and then you have to execute them in the game. So it's a challenge for everybody. Same for us. 
there was some lip reading going on during the game uh, broadcast wise and it looked like we could see Robert say to or Jonathan say to Robert we're just not good enough would you do you share that sentiment when it comes to this football team yeah uh, you'd have to ask them about what they said I don't know well yeah we didn't do enough yesterday looking towards the Colts now obviously a weird week with you guys traveling to Germany how difficult is that does that throw a wrench in your week or are you guys you know everybody has to deal with changes week to week when traveling this is kind of a big one how different is the preparation for the Colts this week compared to a normal week yeah well quite different you know we'll leave Thursday after practice and uh, you know lose the time going over there show up Friday morning so um, you know we've done it before on on the trips to uh, London so same general idea uh, yeah it's a little bit different you know we'll have to adjust to it just like you know the Colts will have to make an adjustment so that is what it is was it your decision to leave on a Thursday how did that go in because I've seen some teams that are traveling abroad go on Mondays or you know what made it you guys decide to go Thursday I feel like that's the best thing to do and that's what we did in last in our other games over there it's there's some adjustments to make but I feel like that's the best thing to do are you a schnitzel guy? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the diesel direct player of the game was Pop Douglas. Uh, seemed like he was a, a light, or a, like, or, or maybe the term to use is a lighthouse in the in a darker day. A little bit about what Pop did yesterday. Yeah, well, Pop's been. Um, um, you know, been involved in, in both the return game and, and offensively um, you know, with some occasional carries and, you know, playing the slot receiver and uh, he's made some made some plays, made some yesterday. You know, he's, gets the ball in his hands. He's, he can make some yards with it. So if we can get him into space, and it's a good thing. I assume you speak with Robert Kraft frequently. Is, is he frustrated with the way this season has gone? Yeah, I, I would think you'd have to ask him about that. I don't want to speak for him, but yeah, I mean, everybody's frustrated with it. The coach's verdict presented by Catches Law Group, New England's injury pros at CatchesLaw.com. Catches is proud to be the official law firm of the New England Patriots. Curtis? Uh, Bill, last week you said to Greg about the, the two full-time jobs that would have to be the head coach and the GM. I'm just curious, as just a general rule, what is the most difficult part of your day-to-day your job as the coach of the Patriots. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, just do what we do. Different things to do every day. Each day is a little bit different, but yeah, I enjoy what I'm doing. I try to do the best I can at it. Yeah, I think there was some interest in that answer because um, I think everybody has always assumed that you are the head coach of this football team and the GM of the of the football team. Is that kind of how it breaks down? Uh, yeah, well, but yes, but I mean, there's other people involved, and again, there's no way that one person, in my opinion, can do everything that needs to be done in those two roles. I mean, you need help from somebody. Somebody's got to make the final decision. I don't care what team it's on. Like somebody has to have the final say, um, but there's a lot of work that goes into the process of you know, doing that. Uh, it, and when it comes to that final decision, does that end up being you, or does that end up being Robert Kraft, or well, is that? It depends on what it is. There's a collection of things. So each one's a little bit different. Bill, you say that you enjoy what you're doing, and, and clearly, you know, you love the game. Um, you still got a lot of teaching and coaching left in you. Um, and when things are difficult, you know, you try to always stay within the moment. But as you move forward with your continued coaching career, do you still have that same passion that and that same love that you, you know, you've always had since day one? And do you feel like I still got plenty of gas left in the tank to coach a lot of these these guys to, you know, get us back to what we all expect? Yeah, I mean, I do the best I can every week, and I'm going to keep doing that and do it again this week against Indianapolis. You know, get through the game today and and move on to Indy. So. Obviously, we all have to do a better job and you know, work hard to do the best I can to help the team. I was at the game yesterday, and a bright spot for me, a moving point, and I know that you were in the locker room during halftime, but to watch 150 service members uh, officially enter uh, their time of service, 
it was moving for everybody in the stadium. I know that you have the utmost respect for our military. Uh, how important is a game like that, a salute to service game, in your mind? Um, yeah, no, it's great to recognize those people and you know and the Taps families that were there and the Lewiston families that were there. Um, we've had uh, been involved in a couple of those uh, reenlistments, um, you know, through uh, Joe Cardona and actually Joe's reenlistment. So we've been involved in a couple of those. Those are good experiences for our team uh, to understand what you know, taking an oath to serve means, um, what you're, what, what you represent, what you're willing to give up. Um, and how voluntary it is, you know, and so it's pretty, yeah, pretty uh, moving ceremony and understanding what it is is pretty, obviously, pretty significant to the protection of our country rights and freedom. You answered post game, uh, but I just wanted to ask in light of uh, Jeff Howe report in The Athletic, when it comes to J.C. Jackson and Jack Jones, they started the game on the bench. Uh, that report is that it was performance related. Is 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 that? Yeah, kind I'm of not going to get into that. When all the decisions we make on personnel. But. Okay, Bill. One of the areas that it seems like you know you, you try to find like some bright spots and when things ain't going great. But one of the areas it seemed like you guys have been able to do this past couple of weeks is win the turnover battle. Um, What's kind of been your message in that sense that you've been able to you – you had two turnovers yesterday again, another interception by Kyle Duggar in, in the red zone, and last week you had two more turnovers. So when you start to look at that, maybe just kind of continuing to kind of get the defense to just, you know, create more turnovers. Um, what's been your message to that? It seems like at least you can kind of take some silver lining out of creating turnovers moving forward, especially when you go play a team like the Colts. All right. Well, the number one thing every week uh, that we emphasize is taking care of the ball and trying to take the ball away. So um, we got to do a better job at both, obviously. We had too many opportunities where we lost the ball um, or have lost the ball. <clears throat> you know, and yesterday we had a couple. You know, one was nullified by a penalty and, you know, things like that. I mean, but just in general, ball security is at the top of the list. And taking the ball away is at the top of the list. So um, that was a great play by Jelani to you know punch the ball out. You know we've seen that. Um, you know guys do that. You know through the years it's good good technique. He made a great play on it. And um, but we just we've got to look for those opportunities defensively and, and offensively, and in the kicking game, um, make sure that we secure possession of the ball at all costs. And so that's always emphasized. Luckily it has turned up for some of our turnovers in the last couple of weeks, but uh, that's always top priority every week. Uh, one last one for me, and I know you don't want to answer specifically uh, about uh, specific calls, but do you think it's harder for players at this point to figure out what roughing the passer really is? Uh, not really. I mean, I think we all know what it is. It's Sometimes there's some close calls that, you know, they could go either way. I mean, it's holding, pass interference, defensive holding. I mean, there's a lot of those. So face masks, horse collar, and there's some plays that are close plays. So, but no, I think everybody understands the rule. Um, we certainly spent a lot of time on it, and the last thing we want to do is sack the quarterback. And, you know, we called for body weight or, or you know, drive him to the ground or whatever, so. Yeah, we try to try to do a good job on those things. All right. Well, we will let you get to work and get ready to head to Germany. And thanks for taking the time this morning. All right. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you.